This is Pantheon. Pantheon is a champion with no skill shots, no hard matchups, and no real versatility in his kit. Almost everyone considers him to be one of the easiest brain dead champions in League of Legends. One of the most frustrating champions in all of League of Legends to deal with and has one of the dumbest kits. Everyone except this guy, Keegan the best Pantheon player in the world. Last season, Keegan was able to hold three separate challenger spots playing nothing but Pantheon, peaking as high as rank 20. Why does Keegan succeed on this champion that is seemingly super easy? Why doesn't every Pantheon player have three challenger accounts? Why does Keegan think Pantheon is hard at all? So Pantheon is difficult in the sense of macro play not so much of micro. Uh, a lot of players, they only care about flashy mechanics, but a lot of players don't realize how important the macro game is. Of course, he's not as flashy as your Riven or your Yasuo or your Zed, but he's really, really macro heavy because he's point and click. You have to choose a target. The second you W in, you're in harm's way. You have no defense. You have nothing for you. So basically, he's a really shit champ, forces the player who's playing it to not make a single mistake. Otherwise, if you do make a mistake, it's making the champion practically useless. What Keegan is saying here is that Pantheon can only pick off one person in a team fight. Compared to a Riven who can hit multiple people even if she messes up, Riven can still do as much damage as Pantheon can to multiple people. The price of being an on-click easy champion is that you do significantly less damage than everyone else. But what exactly makes Keegan different from all the other Pantheon players? The difference between him and other Pantheon players is how Keegan plays the game in general. Most Pantheon players are just obsessed with getting kills, get that first blood, get that first advantage, while Keegan often gains first blood when his opponents misstep. In Challenger Elo, most people do not underestimate Pantheon, so it is really hard to get an early kill early on. The way that Keegan gains an advantage through Pantheon is not through kills, it's mostly through minions. During the early game, there's something that I do that the majority of Pan players don't do, and it basically guarantees you uh, the laning advantage already at the beginning of the game. It's always hard push the first wave, slow push the second, and slow push the third wave. Golden rule of this champion. Doesn't matter who you're up against, doesn't matter who your jungler is, the enemy jungler, what the fuck's going on in the game, always do this playstyle. Here's why this strategy is so effective. By fast pushing the first wave, Pantheon will hit level 2 first. Pantheon's early game is already really strong. By hitting level 2, he beats out pretty much every single matchup. The enemy laner is now unable to go for CS because if he does walk up for CS, he's going to be forced back to base after taking a bunch of damage. He then slow pushes the next two waves in order to get a big minion wave to crash into the top turret. By the time the enemy laner hits level 2, Keegan will almost be level 3 and he'll have 2.5 minion waves backing him up. Even if the enemy jungler does show up to gank him, there is no way that this gank is going to be successful. Pantheon's early game, along with all those minions, are going to be too strong for any jungler to handle. By having a huge minion wave crash into the enemy tower, it allows Keegan to roam mid, to invade the enemy jungle, to get to fights first, to harass the enemy laner under his turret should he choose to go for CS, or even let him go back to base and buy an extra item. The best part about this strategy is that the minion wave pushes back to Keegan, so he'll get more farm and safety against future jungle ganks. One thing that Keegan does not do in the early game that many challenger players will tell you to do over and over again is that he does not buy pink wards. In the 30 different games that I watched over Keegan's stream, he purchased a pink ward four times in all of those games. That is a pink ward purchasing rate of 13%. Why doesn't Keegan purchase pink wards? So the reason why I don't buy pink wards is because it's a waste of gold. Pantheon is like mainly an early to mid game champ. This is where... Like, basically his most strongest point. And buying pink wards essentially slows down your items. You need your 80 items ASAP. Hot feels Warhammer, how fast you can get Yomus. Essentially, when you're wasting all your gold on pink wards, you're slowing down how fast you get these items, right? In Pantheon's case, you can't secure vision. He's a uh, immobile champ. So the second you try to, say, defend the pink in the tri brush, it could possibly be a bait, right? If you get too close and the enemy jungle's nearby, you're completely dead if you're caught out. 
when playing Pantheon, it's really important to play with the minion waves. Uh, usually how I'm playing, I'm constantly having the wave push to them or push back to me, right? Having pink wards, it's not really necessary if you're constantly playing the waves how you should, right? So if you have, as an example, right, if you have the wave pushing to them, hard push going on, you get it hit to the enemy tower, it'll reset and push back to you. You don't have, really have to worry about the, the jungler ganking because by the time you have the wave push to their tower, you're already recalled, you got your items, you're going back to lane. And then by the time you come back to lane, the wave's coming to your tower. You don't really have to worry about jungle ganks yet again. Right off the bat, at the beginning of the game, I'm already looking at where the enemy jungler starts. You can tell if it's like the, the enemy bot lane leashed the enemy jungler at bot site or not. I used to be a jungler, so right, I have a feeling if the enemy jungler will be top or not. So I kind of rely on my uh, my game knowledge. You would want to get pink wards though later in the game, around the 20... Uh, I usually buy pink wards around the 20 minute mark. This pink ward strategy that I use is only exclusive to Pantheon. Playstyle of the champ is how he's like insanely early game oriented he's a champion that most strives basically early game dominance all about the early game you you better that you make it or you break it right if you can't have a good early game you basically you're, you're in a really tough spot uh chances are you're not gonna win the game or it'll be really hard to so i basically give all i can to essentially win the early to mid game uh phase it's really important to constantly get the waves pushing uh to them and having it reset back to you. If you fall behind on Pantheon, you're going to be useless, and you're probably going to lose the game. The way that Keegan plays Pantheon compared to other Pantheons is that he does not take risks. Most Pantheon players are just obsessed with using this ultimate to get kills. I need kills. I need to be strong. I need blood. What most of them don't realize is that Pantheon's kit is really strong for lane control and minion control. Because every time the enemy laner needs to take a spear every time they go for a minion, it is really easy to deny and to control the wave as Pantheon. This is what Keegan does to get a lead and to stay ahead. He doesn't take huge risks with his ultimate. He knows he doesn't need to. He either keeps his lead or just slightly ahead. You don't have to help your team every single time with your ultimate. Something that Keegan does that a lot of Pantheon players don't do is he ults for minions in top lane. Mind you, he only does this in the early game. A uh, reason why I ult for minions instead of saving my ulti is because the way you want to play as a Pantheon in top lane is that you don't want to give up any resources. Even, even one wave is a lot of XP and gold, and you're giving that up just to, say, save your ulti. The enemy top laner is going to be up on one wave. That may be the difference between him being level 7 and you're level 6. You don't have any kill potential after that. Right? They, they just may think, oh, it's okay, uh, it's just three melee creeps, no big deal. But it actually does stack up over time, right? So say you give up uh, melee minions now. What if, you know, every like two minutes or so you're giving up three melee minions? So, like out over the course of ten minutes, you're probably giving up like two, three uh, waves worth of minions, right? That's a lot of XP right there and gold. I, I prioritize minions if there's nothing to do on the map. Now, what's going on through Keegan's head when he actually does decide to make a play with his ultimate? There are a lot of factors, but these are the three main ones when it comes to roaming for Keegan. Number one is matchups. Some bot lane matchups are frankly just ungankable. If the enemy bot lane consists of a Vayne and an Alistar, it is really hard to get anything out of that lane. You have to take into account how much tankiness, crowd control, and mobility the enemy bot lane has. You also have to take into account how much mobility, crowd control, and burst your own bot lane has. Simply knowing how matchups go in different lanes will save you a lot of heartache and waste a lot less ultimates. If the enemy bot or mid lane is too difficult to gank, he just chooses not to gank altogether. Simply goes back up top lane and continues his minion lead. The second thing that Keegan looks at is the likelihood of the enemy jungler counter ganking him. Because he's played jungle in past seasons, he has a pretty good sense of when and where the enemy jungler should be. A few things you can do to get better at tracking the enemy jungler yourself, remembering jungle roots, remembering buff timers, or even playing jungle yourself. The last thing he looks at is minions lost versus potential gained. If you get two kills mid lane or bot lane with your ultimate, that's great. But if you lose three minion waves and your top turret so you can do that, that is not so great. This is why Keegan puts so much emphasis on minion control, always making sure that his minions will push out and bounce back to him. What about the late game? Most people will say that Pantheon does not scale well into the late game, you've heard this before. But according to Keegan, only bad Pantheon players 
don't scale well into late game. Many different ways of playing the mid to late game to become useful. It's just that a lot of players don't realize it, right? They may not use the ulti efficiently. They can't. They get. They can't find any opportunities to kill anyone. Uh, maybe they're too tanky, or they don't know how much damage they deal, or maybe they don't understand the actual power spike, right? Or the current power spike of Pan. Speaking of other builds, I've gone the Yomu's Black Cleaver into the Last Whisper item when I'm up against three tanks. Uh, essentially, what you're doing with this build is looking to shred armor ASAP. You, like, you don't necessarily have to focus the AD carry chilling way far in the back line. You just focus down that Malphite real quick and do some damage to him. You don't, ha you don't always have to use your ult in the team fight. Just peel for your team. You don't always have to, you know, just jump in and be a man. Just stay back, you know. Calm down. Just peel for your carries, mid lane and AD carry. They'll do the killing for you. You don't have to be the carry that game if a team comp like that arises. You have to adapt to your situation. You have to know what you're doing. Basically, the main reason that Keegan succeeds on Pantheon where other Pantheons don't succeed is that he's constantly planning ahead of the game. He's thinking two, three, four, even ten minutes ahead. Most Pantheon players have the spirit that Pantheon has. A Spartan. Kill the backline. Kill the squishies. Kill the women and children. Keegan doesn't play like that. Keegan is calm. He's calculating. He is not like a Spartan. He is like a tactician. He's like a chess player. That's the difference between Keegan and the other Pantheon players out there. The safer play is the better play. Uh, but yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you so much to Keegan for letting me use his footage and for taking the time for letting me to interview him. If you want to watch more Keegan and more Pantheon, you can check out his Twitch stream and look at his LOL King guide on everything that you need to know about Pantheon. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share this video. That's it. Bye.